This is how writers need to treat classic characters, respect the history, and build upon it rather than throw it out for convenience and expediency. I've been waiting for the right issue to finally review Immortal Hulk on the channel. Thinking Critical launched after issue 9 release, the strongest of the series so far. After reading Immortal Hulk number 17, I knew I needed to talk about it. Hulk has been criminally misused since Greg Pak's classic Planet Hulk story arc. Hulk fans waited 13 long years and suffered through Gogurt Hulk taking the Incredible Hulk title for a series worth their time. British writer Al Ewing is an unlikely creator to restore Hulk to the forefront of the industry. He's written Judge Dredd, Mighty Avengers, Ultimates, and other named properties, but until now, he's never scribed anything customers would call must-read. His success on Immortal Hulk elevates his status, and he's now the primary creative voice on the upcoming Marvel Comics 1000. Brazilian artist Joe Bennett has been in the industry much longer. He started publishing Brazilian horror comics back in the 90s. Bennett cut his teeth in North American comics on Amazing Spider-Man, Captain America, Fantastic Four, and Incredible Hulk. His past work on horror comics serves Immortal Hulk well. Al Ewing and Joe Bennett are redefining the classic Hulk character. The team take the first page to catch readers up on the current situation following Immortal Hulk 16. Bruce Banner and his therapist fell into a trap searching for Rick Jones' body. They arrived at Shadow Base A and Agent Burbank, also known as Bushwhacker, killed his therapist. The trap was sprung when they fired up their UV emitters, forcing Hulk to retreat. Hulk only comes out at night and Bruce Banner was shot. I love it when writers take the time to welcome new readers to a series and catch them up best they can. Immortal Hulk can accurately be described as a new classic and Joe Bennett's excellent horror graphics are a major reason. Veteran horror artist Bennett uses multiple tricks to create a sense of urgency and dread. He orients panel angles and reader perspective to ratchet up tensions. His excellent details on facial expressions are perfect for Ewing's intense narrative style. Rue Jose inks Bennett's excellent line art and they are extremely dynamic, vicious action scenes. The pairing of Bennett and Jose push Immortal Hulk to the lead of mainstream horror comics. The series has become well known for outlandish and extremely frightening splash pages. These are kept to a minimum this issue, but when given the opportunity, they continue to shine. This scene is horrifying, bone-chilling comic excellence. Color artist Paul Mounts completes the art team and his work is stellar. He makes Hulk's trademark green stand out and feel very powerful. The art team, led by Bennett, is second to none. I rate their work in Immortal Hulk number 17 a 5 out of 5. Al Ewing steps up to the plate to match or exceed his art team on a regular basis. An overarching theme of this series is Bruce Banner's dissociative identity disorder. Bruce's multiple personalities are finally confirmed a few issues back. There is much potential for exploration moving forward. This issue, we're introduced to a new personality, Joe. The team believes with Hulk suppressed by UV rays, Bruce Banner is a helpless target practice. Agent Burbank, a cyborg who creates complex weapons with his appendages, learns that's not the case. He's not hunting Bruce today. General Fortian, a Thunderbolt Ross stand-in, and his team cross-reference Joe with Ross's old files. They discover Joe is in fact Joe Fixit, an alias Banner once used during his Grey Hulk days. They learn Fixit is vulnerable to sunlight as well. It's incredibly important when a creator takes over a character with history like Hulk to embrace it. Bringing back Joe Fixit from the archives as one of Banner's personalities is brilliant. It shows Ewing's reverence for the character and ingenuity incorporating into his new direction. Fortian and his team adjust the UV rays to attack this new personality. It turns out Fixit is a very clever survivor. He knows Banner's body can take the sunlight and he implements a plan to thwart his attackers. He hacks into Shadow Base A's computer system to alter the emitter rays to his benefit. A vast majority of the issue is introducing or reacquainting readers with Joe Fixit. Al Ewing does an impressive job incorporating past Hulk lore into his new character arc. I rate his characterization a 5 out of 5. The plot doesn't move the overall story much, but does demonstrate Joe's ingenuity while being hunted by Bushwhacker. 
The issue opens with Burbank hunting down a wounded banner. He believes he's trying to destroy the UV emitters and find some darkness so Hulk can come out. He still believes he's talking to Banner, but readers with an eye for details will notice the thought bubbles are a new gray color. The resilient Joe Fixit throws radioactive ants in his eyes. Fortian and his team adjust their emitter wavelength after discovering Joe's identity. Joe realizes Banner's body isn't nearly as resilient as his and notes he needs to be more cautious. He gains access to the computer system inside Shadow Base. Burbank shoots Banner when he reaches him. He receives orders to dismember Banner's body and bring him to Fortian. Burbank discovers Banner is much stronger than he appears far too late. Joe Fixit tosses him aside before he lets him in on his plan. He's adjusted the emitters to gamma rays. This is an absolutely insane story. The look on Fixit's face is beyond menacing. He explains Banner doesn't know computers but he knows Gamma Rays. Fortian's team realize that he's adjusted the emitters and try to get Burbank out, but it's way too late for that. Shadow Base is flooded with Gamma Rays and Hulk returns to the surface. The reveals of the full fallout of this Gamma Overdose are terrific. There's also a cliffhanger on the last page that has me hot for the next issue. The plot doesn't really move the story forward, but it reveals a new personality and his capabilities. Immortal Hulk number 17 is an enormous success for Al Ewing. I rate the plot a 5 out of 5. Immortal Hulk has cemented Al Ewing as a very relevant talent in the industry. His creative direction revitalized Hulk and he's crafting new layers to the character. This is how writers need to treat classic characters, respect the history and build upon it rather than throw it out for convenience and expediency. Joe Bennett Rue Jose and Paul Mounts execute Ewing's vision to perfection. The visuals are terrifying, exciting, and a true spectacle. I rate Immortal Hulk number 17 5 out of 5. This issue and the entire series has my highest recommendation. Immortal Hulk is one of the few ongoing series building an audience with continued excellence. There is a diehard fan base for this version of Hulk. Older fans enjoy it equally. The series has experienced a couple hiccups. The first issue has a strong anti-gun tone, and later Hulk has his green privilege check. I can easily overlook some lame virtue signaling when the writing and execution are this stellar. If you're looking for great comics and not reading Immortal Hulk, you need to discover this book soonest. It might be the best in all of comics. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews, and don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.